Hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. It is another week, another moment, and I am post certified facilitators training. I believe this is my eighth year, seventh year, I don't even know, of being a certified facilitator. We were just in Mexico and now I'm back and Andres is traveling to Colombia. So welcome to this episode. I call this one, what awareness do you give up to fit? This is gonna be very much a conversation centered in and around entities. I have, of course, a Talk to the Entities class coming at the end of the week, and I'm doing them all the time. So even if you're listening to this in the future, you're invited to wherever and whenever I'm doing one. Um, but as I was looking at the conversation that I wanted to be having about entities, it was really a conversation in and around awareness. And what I'm always looking for in my own life is where I can be more aware and less out of conclusion. So if you guys, hi Marisol, if you guys have questions about entity stuff, feel free to put them in the comments. And um, you're so welcome, Sergio, it's nice to see you here. And uh, I'll handle them, we will talk about them. But this conversation is gonna weave in and around awareness and belief. Now, I wanna start out with this. Clearing, ready? Everything that you've bought that you could not handle, everywhere you've bought that you could not handle what you're aware of, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, man's. Okay, this is your like 30 second education on the world of spirits. They exist, you are aware of them, and now what are you gonna do with that? That's it, that's the whole conversation. Um, and, and to accomplish that in Talk to the Entities, we really talk about the four different pillars of entity awareness, which is clearing them, communicating with them, receiving from them, and cooperating with them. Hi, Maxi. <laughs> so the class goes into a lot more detail around that. And if you'd really, if you want more immediately, go buy the book, talk to the NCs in Amazon. But is there, it, have you somewhere bought that there's some part or a lot of your awareness that you couldn't handle, first of all? And everything that is times a gazillion, we just try and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. The second piece to that is if you're new to the clearing statement, go to theclearingstatement.com and find out what I just said. Um, the third part is like, are you cutting off your awareness of anything, but let's address spirits for a second in order to fit. Now, this thing about fitting, validating other people's realities, believing or not believing has really been like up in my world. I've been looking at it a lot and not so much in regards to entities anymore, although that was a place I was more like in the realm of relationships and new country and all that because my life has recently changed. But but it doesn't really matter where you're doing this. If you're doing it in one area, you're doing it everywhere to a degree. So are you cutting off what you're aware of in order to fit, win, benefit, and not lose? And everything that is times a gazillion, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, beyonds. Hi, Nina. So in the Talk to the Entities manual, there's this really amazing section that goes, here's the lesson you should have been given on awareness. And I sort of stopped at point number one. Point number one in the lesson you should have been given on awareness is awareness does not exclude. You are going to be aware of everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And for me, every time I read something out of a consciousness book or a manual, it like, if I'm, I'm always different, so I always hear it different. And that took on a different level of ah oh, for me <laughs> yesterday you're going to be aware of everything the good the bad and the ugly because here's what i got about that different than i've gotten before is that is the energy that i still use sometimes to like not be aware of what i've decided is ugly or not be aware of what i don't want to know as bad and i do it less but i still do it and what i find with entities in particular is that there's a lot of cutting off what you're aware of because of fill in the blank because i don't think i can handle it because i don't know what to do with it because it's not relevant because um it's too hard it's too much it's like my you know so just for fun all the becauses that you're using 
to not have you that you're choosing, will you destroy and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pod, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. I wanted to kind of jump over into then the topic of, of belief, which may seem not linked, but seems to be in some way. Um, because, so I was reading in another section, this sentence is, how many of you realize that you're spending your life in a conflictual universe? So it's like we cut off our awareness so that we don't have to have it, so that we don't have to handle it or work with it or get to work in some way. And then we flip ourselves into a conflictual universe by believing or not believing that it's actually occurring. And that that's that's the thing I'm unraveling for myself is this thing about like, I don't believe this or I do believe this, which is judgment. So let me read this to you. In order to have a point of view about anything, you have to believe something. So whatever your points of view are about spirits, entities, ghosts, demons, all that stuff, in order to have that point of view, you have to believe something. So I think it's interesting to relate this to the spirit world because a lot of our beliefs come, or at least for me, came from religion. So it's like I knew about, yeah, I believed in demons and I believed in angels and I believed in these other beings from a long time ago. And then I swapped those beliefs. No, let's see. I started out with one set of beliefs, right? Angels, demons, angels, reincarnation, fairies, like all these other like super new age beings, right? I, so I had those as beliefs. And then I became a Christian at 20 and I dropped those beliefs, which I actually didn't think I was gonna be able to do, but I did in favor of believing in the one true God, Jesus, demons, angels, but not so much of those guys, just more Jesus. Okay. And then for a while, those were my beliefs. And then I dropped those beliefs in favor of maybe I don't have any beliefs. And then I found consciousness. And with consciousness, I started to uncover all kinds of things that I'm still uncovering, right? All kinds of things about me, all kinds of weird things that are actually true, all kinds of things about spirits and entities and all these other things that are just true. They, they just are that way. And so what consciousness gave me access to is what is instead of what I believed. And even if you look at the energy of like what is and then belief and just look energetically at which one's lighter or heavier, belief in my world has this huge thud to it. But even just today, I found myself doing belief, right? So, you know, whatever. The awareness is a gift. You can then make another choice. Yes, I was taught that, yet it never seemed as truth for me, so I'm still working on that. Yeah. There is a lot of things that we were taught that weren't about awareness. We were taught a lot of things as fact that had nothing to do with, hey, you're an aware being. Do you know how that works? So, like, for example, did you know that you're going to be aware of everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Did you know that um, awareness is one of your superpowers and no one can take it away from you? Did you know that... Um, the spirit world lives in the land of awareness. Did you know that when you reject, suppress, judge, misidentify awareness, it turns into pain, sadness, upset, and sickness, and maybe even insanity, like, you know, mental health problems? Did you know that awareness is just awareness? It's not rightness. It's just what you're aware of. Did you know that just because you're aware of it doesn't mean you need to do anything about it? I mean, that's the lesson we should have been given on awareness. Were any of you guys given that? Yeah, no, me neither. So like this reality swaps a conversation about awareness for a conversation on belief. This is what you should believe and this is what you shouldn't believe and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it like goes so much further than that. And that's where I wanted to like, that's where I wanted to take us. So in order to have a point of view, you have to believe something. If you believe something, you also have to have the other side of it, which is I don't believe. So I believe this and I don't believe this. I'll tell you how this is showing up for me right at the moment. I've been looking at where I'm rejecting. And for me, it's showing up most dynamically in relationships. And so I've been looking for the choices that I have beyond that. And one of the things that I've heard come out of my mouth is, you know, someone 
will do something or like my mom is a great example. She just sent me a birthday card and she always writes on there that she loves me forever and that I'm her favorite thing. But then the way she is with me doesn't match, right? There's an incongruence. So she sent me this birthday card and I went into, ah, fuck, I never believe, you know, it's like, I never believed that bitch. So I just discarded, like it just got rejected. And I've been doing that with her for a really long time. So this is something I've learned how to do. I don't believe that. Mm, that's bullshit, right? It just gets completely dismissed. Now, that showed up in hand in hand with this other place I've been doing. I don't believe this. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And so I, it, it started to become really obvious. And I've been looking at it. And I'm like, this is a place where I refuse to receive. I'm like, not willing. Now, I don't even know yet what I'm refusing. I don't even know the awareness I'm refusing. I could be refusing awareness of shitty things. I could be refusing awareness of great things. My sense is that they're great things. Um, and, or, or all of it, right? Because awareness includes the good, the bad, and the ugly. So when you do, I don't believe this, you have the other side of I believe this. Well, when you're doing that, that belief requires validation. So when you're doing belief, you have to have your belief validated in order for it to be right. And that's the universe you're in with that. When you do, I don't believe this, you have to have your not belief validated in order to be right. Or the, I think the other thing with, I don't believe this is like, you're fine being on your own, right? You can just refuse totally and go into that world of like, I don't need anybody anyway, which I've done so much of in my life. So, in order to, if you believe something, you have to have the other side of it, which is, I don't believe. If you were doing infinite being, you would perceive, know, be, and receive. And you would unbelieve. Like there's no not belief or belief, it's just unbelief. Uh, you would no longer have a belief, you would do perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. Total awareness would be perceiving, knowing, being, and receiving. And you guys have heard me talk about this, about talk to the entities. It's like, it is the being, knowing, perceiving and receiving class that the spirit world forces you by its very nature for you to practice being and perceiving and knowing and receiving. In order to not function from total awareness, you have to unbelieve in perceiving, knowing, being and receiving. You have to function from belief and unbelief, which is a limitation. So it's like, how many beliefs and unbeliefs are you using to negate being, knowing, perceiving, and receiving are you choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion where you destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I really choose to be open and receive everything, yet I have to be aware to not be vested in the how. Well, the cool thing is that in total receiving, there is no how. It literally melts out of your world in, in true receiving, true being, true knowing and perceiving. The how is a non-existent element. It's, it becomes the least relevant thing because it's not real. There is no actual how. It's like, you know, a seed doesn't fall from a tree, land on the ground and then ask, well, how do I do this tree thing? You know, it doesn't do that. Uh, because it doesn't exist. It's something we've invented as a, as a thing that should be, but it doesn't actually work. That's not real, right? So that's why it disappears. The things that disappear when you begin to be are the things that were never real in the first place. So that's why I've been really looking at when I'm choosing something beyond, something outside of being, which is refusing or believing or not believing. That's like something that is invented. <laughs> so anyway, so people use belief instead of awareness. So if you guys look at this in regards to the spirit world, it's like how many beliefs are you still using in regards to entities? Well, I believe this, or I don't believe this, or everything happens for a reason. I believe that. Or um, I can't even think of any. But everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine charts, boys and beyonds. Okay, so people use belief instead of awareness. It is not awareness. It's conclusion, decision, and judgment. 
unbelief in this particular case means that you are refusing awareness in favor of belief. So this is about what you choose and what you refuse. I don't believe is refusing and I do believe is the choosing. Belief is based on judgment and contextual reality is what you're using to create your judgments. So like, yeah. How much contextual reality are you using to believe are you choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion will you destroy and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, all online shorts, boys and beyonds. So I, I'm doing way more facilitation in this episode than I probably ever do. Um, how does it get about it better than that? What if you could choose what you wanted your reality to be like? Now, I've been, I've been doing a lot of reading over the last week since I got back from Mexico. I've really just been like, in a, I've been in a reference materials hot tub for like the last five days um, because I'm really going after changing something I've been doing. And so this having your reality, having your capacities, having your abilities is is an ongoing thing. Like there's no end to it. It's not like at some point you'll just be there and all of a sudden you'll have all of you. Right. The choice to have all of you begins the journey of having it. And then what needs to show up in order for you to have all of you comes up to change. So any unconsciousness that you're doing, all the beliefs or not beliefs, like every morning I've been asking myself, and I got this from Christopher Hughes, um, universe, show me where I'm lying to me. That's a part of having all of me, because if I'm lying to me about something that I'm never going to have all of me. So what if you could choose the possibilities that show up in your life is like this ongoing thing. And what I've been really looking at is where I give up that creative ability in favor of believing or not believing or resisting and refusing rather than receiving. So if you didn't have to, like I, I, would, I did a reel, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm dabbling in reels, you guys. So I did a reel the other day. Oh, today I posted one. It was a, it's really fast, but it shows you how to download from entities. And somebody commented on it of like, I really don't know why we'd, we would want to be part of download. The downloading exercises is pinging all the entities and then choosing to be whatever it is they require. And then going on with your day. And she said, I really don't get why we would want to be whatever they require. And then she said something after that, like, basically, you wouldn't want to just be anything for anybody was the energy. And what I said was, well, does resisting make your life easier? Now, this is interesting, because if, if, you, if in two minutes, you can simply tap in and just be whatever anybody requires and desires from you with no point of view and you can just be it we would not choose that for what reason and man the reasons are multiple right like multiple we don't think it can be that it, it can't be that easy um everybody's trying to get more out of us we've decided we have to do things we um, it can't be that easy but if it was that easy would that be more like your reality so when I look at that, I'm like, God, we've put up all, I've put up all these other defenses and protections and I'm using so much power still to hold in place, refusing to hold in place, rejecting to hold in place, like not being rather than just to be tap in and be. So that's the simplicity of working with the spirit world. There are times when I, and I said in the real, it like handles 98% of your entity activity. That's my sense. Because I pretty much walk around like that most of the time. And then there's the occasional time when I'm in a haunted apartment and I need to spend, I need to do more work to change the energy. Or I'm with a haunted person and I need to do more work to change the energy or a haunted kid or whatever. Um, there, are, there are times. But if most of what occurs for you is occurring all around you all the time, that's the thing with entity stuff is it's, it's happening whether you acknowledge it or not. 
So you're either working with it or you're at the effect of it all the time. And the more you practice working with it, the more you become it. So it becomes less work. But in the beginning, you know, like there's a need to build that muscle if you want to have an easier life and you really want to walk through the world as ease and joy and glory and all that stuff. So forget where I was going with that. Oh, but the what if you could choose the possibilities that show up in your life is a choice that you make in, in every second. And um, what I'm being with for me is how different it makes me to truly function from being and knowing and perceiving and receiving rather than belief and not belief or relationship as it's done in this reality or you know communion instead of love all the all the stuff that that is so different and other that's the thing I'm sitting with personally is like, am I willing to be that different? Even for myself, am I willing to be so different? I don't even recognize myself. And sometimes it's yes. And sometimes it's no. But if you were going to choose something that catapulted you into a different reality, this would be that conversation. Because for me, taking the lid off the talk to the entities work was like, okay, once I go here, I, it's like there's no coming back from this, right? And there isn't. After you start to acknowledge, and this isn't even about like uh, belief. This isn't about belief or not belief that you have a capacity with entities. This is about claiming it, that everyone perceives them. Are you going to work with it or are you going to hurt, you know? Once you start to acknowledge that and go, be willing. That's when all these other choices open up and all this other magic becomes available and all this other receiving shows up. So are you right now spending your life in a conflictual universe? Is that where you want to live? Who or what is inviting you beyond conflict that you haven't yet acknowledged? How much power and energy are you using to maintain the conflictual universe? A little bit or a megaton? If you can use that much energy and that much power to maintain conflict, is it possible that you have that same amount of energy to create a different reality? Have you yet chosen to engage in the creation of a different reality for you yet? The world of entities is there. There, you can put that in my quote book. What you will do with it is up to you. And I discovered like with anything in consciousness that you can simply use the clearing tools that you can find in the book or in a foundation class and, and get along pretty well. Pretty well, like 80%. But there will be things that you are aware of and not handling beyond that. And so will you continue to choose and institute and create the conflictual universe where you're not sure if you want to be that different, et cetera? Or will you allow that self-erected barrier to melt and engage with a world that is inviting you to be what you are? Uh, 
I am yours in the process. <laughs> and if I can contribute to, to that for you, I'd love to. What would it take for us to include our own abilities and our own capacities with the unseen? The world of energy and the world of entities invite us to be all that we are. And what will you choose? And that's it for this week. So if you loved this and you'd share it, awesome. If you love this podcast and you leave a five-star review on iTunes, I'd be so grateful. And if you'd like more of Talk to the Entities, you can find me. If you'd like more awareness, you can find the Awareness Challenge on Facebook. And if you'd like to just start with one tool, try what else is possible that I haven't considered today. And otherwise, I will see you guys next week.